Taxen, a set of tactile sensory modeling sculptures. Author Alexandra Ivanova. Taxen is a set of 16 sculptures designed to activate tactile sensory experience of clients during art therapy. The sensations and memories awakened with the aid of the fingers are able to provoke numerous associations through which clients may speak more freely, may connect with some deeper layers of their personality and become aware of different and unfamiliar aspects of their experiences up to now. The methodology of this tactile art therapy technique includes a stage of gaining awareness and recreating thoughts and feelings, activated through touch into new shapes, this time created by the very client of the art therapy process. The sculptures are small plastic artworks, shapes that are perceived visually and tactually from many viewpoints. Their sizing is deliberately intended to comfortably fit in the palm of a hand. The chosen material is porcelain mass, which is meant to provide solidity, a variety of textures and shapes, and to affect directly the tactile sensory apparatus. The colour of the sculptures is intentionally ignored as means of expression in order to keep the focus on the work with the shape and the texture. The sculptures have been created by the author especially for the purposes of the set. The set is placed in a tailor-made box with a deep lid. Inside the box there are 16 nests that are individually shaped for each sculpture. The box serves not only as a package of the set, but forms an important part of its implementation method in the course of the art therapy session. In terms of morphology and typology, the sculptures are organized in three groups, cognitive, amorphous and gestalt shapes. Cognitive shapes. The cognitive shape group bears this name because their perception involves cognitive recognition skills. The objects that we most easily discern from time immemorial are first of all human figures and faces, as well as animals and plants. They are related to a certain specificity, culture and the human society memory, and are a part of our close surroundings. It is not by accident that when people find themselves in a cave or in a natural site with bizarre shapes, they give them human or animal names. This process of personification of environment is our way of making ourselves feel comfortable and safe in it. The sculptures express a specific posture or state, but their recognition in the dark takes place to a different extent. Depending on the attitude of the specific client, they may be subjectively perceived, and this is what holds the true therapeutic value of the taxon experience. With sculpture perception, it should be noted that eye and hand aesthetics vary greatly. Tactually, clients perceive positively the general balance of shapes and the surface texture, whereas with the visual perception, the purely recognizable signposts, the already developed aesthetic models and stereotypes that hands do not acknowledge, become of a much greater importance. Shortly put, with their eyes open, clients would choose one shape, and a completely different one with their eyes closed. Bird. It has a clear-cut head, body and tail. The wings of the bird are folded. The posture expresses peace. This is among the most recognisable figures. Fish. A recognisable zoomorphic form with a visible bilateral symmetry, a leading spine, a head and a tail. Its characteristic flexing motion is clearly perceptible. The shape is dynamic and comprises positive and negative volumes. Meditation. An easily recognizable anthropomorphic figure. It has a sitting posture with folded arms and legs. The overall silhouette is associated with the meditating Buddha, a model of mental and physiological state that is equally familiar to the West and the East. 
pregnant woman. A realistic anthropomorphic figure sitting on its knees with hands stretched on top of them. While visual perception cannot omit the expanded abdomen, with the use of touch it often remains hidden in the general volume. Head holder. An anthropomorphic figure inviting to various interpretations. It is sitting on its knees while the hands support the head. Because of its streamlined shape, it takes on a different orientation axis. The merging of the hands and the head in one volume alter the overall perception. Acrobat This is the anthropomorphic figure which is the hardest to recognize and the most surprising. The silhouette is a circle that connects the arms and the legs behind the back. It is chosen by clients who accept challenges. For shape a highly stylized anthropomorphic figure with marked bilateral symmetry reduced an ornament in terms of silhouette. It may be linked to figural motifs and amulets of the geometric period. Scroll A generalized anthropomorphic figure with a globular body. Due to its round shape, it can rock back and forth. Visually, one can differentiate a head, a body, and folded limbs. Amorphous shapes. This part of the sculptures is devoid of any cognitive, identifiable prompts. Amorphous shapes are not tied to specific objects. They have no specific architectonics, no static points or axes, and they can be freely perceived depending on the mindset and the associations of the client. They usually express motion, process, change. In nature, we often discern shapes in stones, organic debris sculptured in the most peculiar way. The dynamics of the shape-forming elements that have created them is of essential significance to their tactile perception. When working with these figures, clients follow the shapes and the voice of the hands is prevailing. To head it. In terms of morphology, this sculpture is an elongated oval body, the ends of which coalesce and twist. This figure is the easiest of its group to imitate, but also remains open to a large number of associations a heart, a hug, etc. Ring. A thick cylindrical shape with a wide opening in the middle. The outside wall is made of protruding spherical volumes that create one common surface seemingly covered by a thin membrane. The shape has a dynamic structure and indicates an inside-out motion. Pierced. It originates from a deformed cube with concave walls. A round opening pierces two neighboring walls. It resembles a shape accidentally created by nature. The shape forming motion is pressure applied inwards. Gesture. A game of shapes. Its bilateral symmetry creates a sense of something familiar, but this is indeed an illusion, a collection of elements. The morphology of this shape intends a balance between the positive and the negative volumes that it is composed of. Shell. This is a severely deformed plane that originates from a rectangular foundation. This sculpture bears traces of bilateral pressure applied to its center. Thus, two faces are shaped on the figure, one with a convex and one with a concave character. Gestalt shapes. The third group of shapes is characterized by structure principles established with the evolution of mankind and nature, wholeness, logical shapes, configuration and connection of elements, image closure, etc. Gestalt psychology deals with the principles of human perception, the ability to group components into one complete image, to separate images from one another and from their background. As a manner of formation, Gestalt shapes are simple and logical. They are balanced and harmonic shapes, 
the mere touch to which brings satisfaction. The perception of a certain order and structure, regardless of the specific identification of the object, adds a pleasant emotion to perception. The touch to the shapes of this group resembles the rosary effect. It suits and summons an almost meditative experience. Clients examine them for a long time as if to enjoy their structure. Spiral. The leading principle is the one of the logarithmic spiral, which could be found in both inanimate nature, like galaxies, cyclones, etc., and in some biological species, sunflower, fur cones, snails. Pyramid. The shape is composed of a regular tetrahedron, also known as one of the five platonic solids. In the sculpture, however, each peak ends in a spiral, whereby the spirals on two of the faces converge inwards and one goes outwards. The remaining faces have no inside spirals. Bud. A simple ovoid shape that divides along its central axis into three similar areas that converge at its bottom. Visually, it resembles a flower bud. The selection and exploration of the sculptures is done blindly, with the use of touch. If clients feel uncomfortable with their eyes closed, or if they feel tempted to open their eyes during the process, they can be offered a cloth, a scarf or another type of eye band. Clients are initially instructed to choose a sculpture from the set by letting different ideas, memories and sensations related to tactile perception freely enter their mind. The set is suitable for individual and group sessions. In the individual sessions, the choice is unlimited. As the person is making their choice, they may sort the sculptures out depending on their degree of preference and ultimately they may end up working with several at once. It takes a long time for some clients to choose, while others instantly select the sculpture. Yet others are strongly divided in their choice. The process itself is projective and is indicative of the client's general attitude towards the choice making in their lives. In group sessions, the number of sculptures has to exceed that of the session participants. The open box is handed personally to everyone so that they may choose tactually a figure to work with. Clients are given sufficient time to make their choices, to examine without any haste the volumes and surfaces of the figures they have chosen. Therefore, preferably, the group should be no larger than 10 people and everyone should be invited to wait patiently, relax and optimally concentrate on the process there and then. Clients go through the following major stages during a session. First, experiencing emotions, memories and associations attained through an external object. The sculpture acts as a trigger. Second, recreating impressions into a new original shape made out of clay. Sublimation. Third, comparing and experiencing both realities, internal and external. Objectifying the impressions from the session. In some cases, the first stage is sufficient to provoke an immediate response. Verbalization of the experienced emotions, memories and the respective resultant sensations and associations. It is possible that this stage is perfectly sufficient for the objectives of the specific session and to trigger a treatment process on a given issue. Clients who stop here receive an authentic contact with their experiences stemming from their tactile sensory perceptions. The unusual way of how they have been reached gives a different viewpoint. It decentralizes and surprises the clients with its freshness and spontaneity. In this form, the technique may be applied as a warm-up part of the session 
or as a way to develop a new topic for research in the art therapeutic process. The second stage builds on the previous one. It involves the modeling of a new figure by the client, allowing them to recreate the mental experience of the first stage. Once the chosen sculpture is examined tactually, it is returned to the box without being seen, and clients are invited to create a new form out of clay in their own manner with eyes open or closed. It is important to highlight to clients that their task is not to recreate the shape they have chosen, but to model a new, original one under the influence of the experienced sensations. The modeling is not intended to recreate the original. Clients are given as much time as needed and feasible within the general duration of the session. Once this stage is completed, clients are invited to share the sensations the meanings and emotions that they have put into the newly created form. In the third final stage, the original and the new form are placed side by side to be explored by the clients. This allows them to make a reality check. It is to compare the two realities, the internal and the external one, to reflect on both resemblances and differences while enabling them to awaken towards a more adequate assessment of the issues raised in the art therapy session. I really like it because there are two pointy edges. Like... I don't know, it symbolizes two opposite directions. Like there is a conflict between two things and each of them is pulling into the opposite direction and it's really soothing I feel like I'm connecting you know, connecting with some different aspects of myself that soothe me I would definitely I'm not able to do it the same way as it is the, the original one. Oh, I just love feeling this clay. It's like a living creature. But I feel that the way I'm doing it, it's uh, like more rough or um, not so gentle and soothing. Or maybe the clay is the one that is leading the process, not me. I'm wondering as well why I continue criticizing the way I'm doing this. Okay, they're not <laughs> even sisters. <laughs> they're maybe cousins. <laughs> I can absolutely see that there's these are two aspects to parts of myself that are trying to communicate and to have a dialogue and maybe to have a meeting point somehow because it feels like they're facing each other yeah this is one of the the big topics in my life why I cannot just let it go and trust the process. The set of sculptures has been applied to various groups of clients and has proven to be highly effective as an art therapy method. The author's observations on the sessions held so far and feedback given from specialists looking after clients' mental health provide sufficient evidence that Taxen is an effective approach when dealing with deep traumas retained at the subconscious level for many years. Through their tactile sensations, clients can literally touch and sculpture those traumas before their very eyes, become aware of how they affect their lives and seek for ways to resolve them. Clay is a highly liberating material that, at the same time, absorbs clients' experiences. In this sense, the process may prove very difficult and painful, and it requires proper professional training and experience 
on the part of the therapists. It is important to emphasize that Taksen Set is intended mainly for professional practice by specialists in the field of mental health care, art therapists, psychologists and others. Taksen is a pilot project that fortunately is different from any of the art therapy methods created so far in Bulgaria as well as abroad. It is yet to be developed and upgraded as an art therapy practice by conducting multiple sessions with various groups of clients. The more art therapists use it, the more information will be gathered on its capabilities and modes of application. I greatly rely on feedback by specialists and clients of the art therapy process who are the target of Taksen, and I hope that over time we may get to learn more and more about it together.